Let's face it, it wouldn't have been a normal play day on uh, HGC, the Hansa Gen G Cup, if we didn't get at least one series on the play day with all direct pass being in the starting map. So here it is. Hope you're coming against the Anti Clown Association. And all track is map number one. So we are on the NA server. This is a tournament that caters more towards the NA crowd, a better starting time for the NA players. And also, again, an A server is the server of choice here. We get a couple of Europeans that are playing, but they also play cross servers. They have ping disadvantages against the an A teams, uh, which definitely play a bit of a role. But again, they're trying their best here to at least stay competitive. And we now made it into the top six. So we have a round robin with the top six teams remaining, four an A teams and two European teams. And that will then lead straight into the actual final. So the final bracket where standing really is going to matter a lot depending on how uh, well you perform in the round robin. You're going to have a much easier time heading into the bracket here. $1,000 are on the line for all of this. And big shout out again to Kevin, to Psykiv for making that possible here. And we get Hogger from Balama as the first pick on this one. So. With all direct pass, Brightwing and Junkrat. No draft rules, no shenanigans, nothing crazy. Just a vanilla tournament here. Also, as I said before, as a bit of a contrast to the normal games that we have. And yeah. Well, normal games in the sense that usually these days what we're doing is we have some kind of draft rules incorporated. Where, for example, you can only play a hero once within a series or there's pre-bans or something else. In this case, there's none of that. So this acts a bit as a contrast to that. And honestly, from all of the feedback that we got so far, it really seems that most people prefer to at least have the rule in play that a hero can only be played once within a single series. So that there's a bit more hero diversity and variety just in general and... Which was also our approach, but again, it was kind of important to us to put this in as well, just to see, okay, do the teams maybe, or uh, the audience maybe prefer that. And every now and then, you know, it's nice to just change it up a little bit. These uh, these bands on the Vikings, by the way, are starting to really annoy me a little bit. I already talked in the past about how it always feels that if the hero gets banned, that he would have been played otherwise, which I know isn't true. But it kind of makes me sad, because in my head now, we missed out on the Vikings game. And Vikings games are awesome. Samura has been banned too. False has been banned. So no globals. We don't get Gorge or anything. I no, really hate fun. A little bit surprised if anything that we're not seeing any Medivh plays, by the way. That was pretty sweet too. Okay. Leo plus Anubarak. Yeah. Could get also maybe even more melee here for Fuzz later. And Ubarak is going to try and cheese some of those prisoner camps again. I've been talking about this for a long time, you know. But of course, you can do also do with, with some other heroes. Just distract those grunts. They're not the smartest. You can just show them a squirrel and they're gonna be in trouble. So. Squirrels are interesting, by the way. European squirrels are absolutely amazing and nice. And American squirrels are just assholes. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy. So yeah, American squirrels... Not a fan, not a fan, really just a pest. Then you get a European squirrel and it's insanely cute and uh, everybody loves them. But yeah, huge difference there. Didn't know that for a long time, by the way. So, yeah. Grim and Genji and the final pick for our first map is... Varian, so the triple front line right there. Varian side lane? Okay, what are we getting here? Do not tell me this is a smash play. All direct pass, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Map number one. First map in the best of three series. Hopium incoming in blue with Justin on Anubarak. We get gray color on Junkrat, Fuzz on Varian, Giblets on Brightwing, and the mundane Zebra is playing Leo. To the right side of the map, the Anti Clown Association in red on All Direct Pass with Kelsey on gray main. We got Valama on Hogger. Viri Day on Lucio, got Filth on Diablo, and Roger is playing Genji, going for the Agile Dismount on level 1. We got the Soul Shield for Diablo over here. And it's time to party. So, Varian, show me what you got. Where's that High King's Quest? There it is. Yep, level 1. High King's Quest for Varian. It's happening. They're gonna scream and yell again. I got my own theory what's happening whenever Smash gets picked for Varian. I think he just like 
unleashes all of that pain, all of that embarrassment, all of those problems that he has having Anduin as a son. And I can absolutely understand that the man must be in constant psychological pain here. Honestly, way more than any psychologist would be able to solve. But yeah, I would scream too. If I had a son like Varian, I would scream all day, every day, so I can emphasize. If he goes for smash and starts screaming, you know why it happened. Varian, I, I, I know he doesn't even hear. That's still embarrassing. No attempts of Blizzard to just kind of go for a man up and win a little bit is gonna, is gonna work there. Giblets on Brightwing? Uh, nearly first blood. And who's gonna take this one? Anti Clown Association? Uh, totally the favorite heading into this. Had some really nice matches already throughout the tournament. I guess against Hope Your Min coming, they are the ones that you would expect to do well here. Alrighty, and Umarak at the top gets caught for just a moment. So they're trying to go for him. Varian says hello real quickly. And Anoop ah, escapes. Anoop able to get out and fast holding the line for now, holding the experience here. But all alone, if they get that minion wave. Into the tower range, Greymane on Warden form. They might be able to do some damage against those towers. Not quite yet. So at the bottom of the map, the mundane Zebra against Roger, who has taken a little bit more damage than he probably likes. And with Brightwing coming in, he needs to immediately bail out. Or well, that would have been the end of him. One poly is all that's needed in that situation, and he is just absolutely toast. So, now yeah, what we're getting instead is the aggression in uh, the middle. Making some moves here. Let's see how far they can go now on this one. Not far enough. Can't take any of the towers down just yet. But again, everybody's just nibbling a bit. They're trying to go for some damage. They're trying to see if maybe they can collapse onto anybody on a the lane. They're waiting for the objective to come up. Let that level 7 talent kick in before you make a play. And they actually go for twin blades. You gotta be kidding me. What? No way! Error doesn't compute. They went Twin Blades! I mean, honestly, they should participate in the Banshee Cup. They could have gone for a bounty on this one. I, like, what? Twin Blades? Really? Damn. I don't know if they are drunk or if they're just insanely confident that they are now reinventing the meta here. But... I mean, either way, I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. I honestly, I, I, I cannot remember when I've seen uh, Meme Blades the last time in a tournament this late in. If ever. It is it, it ridiculous. But okay. Let, I, I, let's see. I, I'm totally game. I would love to see that with... I mean, I would have loved to see it with any kind of proper setup. But hey, if Varian is able to really get value for them, then even better. So let's see what Vos is going to be able to do here. But I did not expect this at all. Not even a little bit. The second that they picked Varian, I was like, alright, this is going to be Smash. Then they went High King's Quest and I was like, yep, we're going Smash. Which is already odd enough. Even taking Smash is out there. I mean, really out there. Not something you normally see. Specifically not in a tournament that doesn't even have any spe uh, special draft rules. But they went for it. And now they're going for the I mean they're going all the way on this one so can they actually do something imagine them winning here <laughs> it would actually be amazing just win the game with meme blades and then you know Varian gets banned next game everybody is rediscovering that Varian is actually just an absolute chat or he could just get bully bullied as he is now down at the bottom of the map but level 7 we get the second win for him we have Greymane with a wizen duelist and at the top yeah, Malamar still going up against the mundane Zebra, who's always ready for another drain. Justin, yeah, hoping to sneak the objective a bit, spawning his beetles and distracting grunts, but couldn't really do anything here. And I still have my eyes on Varian, because I still can't believe what I'm actually seeing here. Going full pleb horse as well. So, uh, trying to go, I guess, for the boss. With that, very, I mean, five minutes in, and the immediate play is they go boss. I mean, instantaneous. And Kelsia sees it. Yeah, gets welcomed by a couple of attacks, but yeah, this is one of the reasons why you would make a play like this with Varian, and they of course called it immediately. 
This is exactly the kind of play that you would like to see from someone like the Underground Association. If they play Twin Blades variant, keep an eye on it and see what they're doing with it. Oh, Lucio, clutch, my friend, gets out. Good for him. So, in the middle, we have Genji sliding through. That boss play has not worked out. It's called very quickly. Now we got level 10 abilities. A little bit of a sneak on a bit of a progress for the Underclown Association on the objective, so let's see if they can do more than that. But Genji is now down at the bottom of the map against Varian. They're trying to go for a noob. Ah, but Justin is able to jump. Well, is he able to jump out? Nope, he's not that first blood. Late, very late in the game, by the way. We're six minutes in, and just now we're getting first blood for them. So there's that. And now all the way up at the top, they're still trying to somehow get the access to the prisoner camp. But Grey Color's just sitting here with Junker, and he's just like, yeah, not really, boys, not on my watch. I'm just going to YOLO a couple of grenades out, and you're not going to be able to get that channel. Or are you? Yep, they are. So, more progress, and they go for the boss at the same time. Yeah, well... It's gonna be shut down for now, but they at least were able to get a bit closer. And now Leo is saying hello and is gonna try and take this. Leo is gonna likely fall here. Mundane Zebra is barely surviving. Genji against Varian down at the bottom of the map and without the Twin Blades, they have of course no chance here. Rip tire, Kelsey has a bit low, careful. Greymain, they, if they lose the boss here, that would be a disaster. And the Cocoon comes in, and I suppose this is going to be the end of the boss play. Or is it? Because Oh, it might not be. Grayman comes in, takes Leo down. The boss gets taken. No, he doesn't. They're still trying to grab it. And Nubarak went in, but they're just going to lose more heroes, aren't they? Brightwing is down. Diablo is down. Now it's only Justin that is still there, together with Grey Color. And they... Oh, the kill against the noob. And now against Junkrat. That is five kills, two, one, and a boss at the top lane. As down at the bottom of the map, Genji and Varian are gonna have a bit of a hyper play here. Greymane falls against Leo, apparently. Leoric was swinging for the fences there and got the maze to the face. High King's Quest with two of the rewards now in. And Faz is getting killed too. So, Varian is gone. They could technically go for a double boss play now too. Level 13 on the board, one level advantage, six kills to two take a few more of the camps and they want to go for the objective as well so a few more points towards the red team as Lucio is trying to zip away from this but the longer they're trying to defend this the less they can do about the boss at the top so it seems like not only is the objective going to get claimed by the anti-clown association but they're already getting the four top side so yep there it is one four down and now the chance to follow up with a few more Damage output, Varian on 17,000 with his Twin Blades, 21,000 for Junkrat. We have 25,000 for Genji, 24,000 for Greymane, so very, very close on uh, this too. And now the move towards the next board. I mean, again, this is only eight, nine minutes into the game, so it's not like those Raiders are absolutely crushing everything in their path, but it's their oh, nice. Good dodge there on the Cocoon. Not quite sure if you guys caught that, but that was actually well done. I'm gonna take another look at that in just a moment. Lucio with a high five here. Brightwing now gone. And Varian is gone too. So, perfect opportunity. Keep an eye on that replay onto Greymane and Lucio. So, Nuburak coming in over here and trying to drop the fight. Gets the Cocoon out and then BAM! I mean, sh super short distance. Huge play for him. I mean, we see a lot of cocoon dodges just in general, but this one was absolutely clutch. I mean, insane. Anticipated it perfectly and then dodged it out. So the fall at the bottom of the map has fallen. And they are half a level away from level 16. The Anti-Clown Association doing exceptionally well now. Yeah, two kills to eight. And uh, are they going for boss? Seems like they actually might down here. Yep. With level 16 talents being this close. I mean, they don't have them yet. But they are very, very close on those. So this could definitely be a play for them. But it's already sniffed out. So you don't really want to force that until you have the level 16 talent advantage. And even then, you should be a bit careful. Because if you want to give your opponent a chance to get back into the game, this is one of the ways to do it. Lose a boss fight big time. So, yeah. Still played slow. Greymane gets the alpha killer. 
on 16. Lucio with the upper frequency and domination for Diablo. So it's bully time. And start to take people down six days or Sunday. Yeah. yeah. This time they're not attacking the boss. I mean, again, like right now you're two levels behind. You don't have level 16. Your opponent is making a move here. So you will just have to let that slide. So far, Varian with Meme Blades hasn't really done too much. Grayman actually gets away from this. Clutch play frame perfect as they grab another boss that's now 11 minutes into the game. That will push for the first keep. And again, we're talking armor shields here on the core, of course, with the way this is playing out. Cocoon again. This time against Diablo. Dibbles immediately wants to make a play. Stun and kill. Junkrat gone. Uh-oh. Whoa-oh, this is bad news. Fountain has been popped, but the aggression in the middle is happening. The boss is moving through the bottom of the map, but this port is definitely going to fall. And now one and a half levels ahead, and another fort gets destroyed. With the prisoner camp getting announced and uh, popping up in another 30 seconds, they could also start making another move there. Times are a little bit tough right now. They're definitely in a pickle here. So, yep. See what they can actually do. How much further can they go? The wall is already up. This one is getting attacked slowly as well, so they're starting to do some damage on this one on the bottom keep. Not enough to seriously threaten it, but still enough to uh, make this a bit of a concern. And oh, that's also annoying. 20 seconds on the boss, but I think Leo is already on the way to check that out. It's all about playing with vision at this point. You really want to make sure that you properly play around vision. You want to make sure that you're finding yourself into or in a position where you're not going to run into too much trouble here, uh, calling your opponent's plays. So once that they're gone and the boss is back up, you should have a look. If they're still on lane and showing on minion waves, it's a bit of a different story. <laughs> and Uberak again, thinking at least about trying to get the uh, progress for them on the prisoner camp. That hasn't happened. We're still making a couple of moves down here. Justin gets killed by Genji. Yep. So Nubarak is gone. The fight in the middle is not going too well for them either. Again, camp is up. Prisoner camps, they could go for the objective. It's not really good news for uh, Hope Your Men coming. Even Meme Blade's variant couldn't save them. Which obviously only doesn't get played these days because it's just so unbelievably powerful that there's a gentleman's agreement that nobody picks it. It's the only reason. 11 kills to 2. Yeah, very nice to step it up a little bit if he wants to win the game for us. Team. So, there's still a boss up at the top. Camp is now about to be claimed, so another objective in the making. Oh, they want Leo and they get Leo. Got Filth is still alive. He's still got some hit points. Yeah. Keep in the middle, down to 50% HP, and we're soon going to get another set of Raiders for the Anti-Clown Association. Roger has done some really nice moves here. Getting that solo kill against the Nuburag was big for him, of course, as well. But now Diablo might die. Yep, he's gone. Killed by Varian! Still the stacks. Oh, but the Duke goes down again. Greyman comes in, just absolutely destroys the Cockroach. No chance. Oh my god, Varian also eliminated. And that is three heroes down. Well, Leo will be back. Oh no, they're getting back. Oh, that hurts. That's too much. That's 15 kills to three and level 20, just as the Anti-Clown Association is also getting raiders. We have 14 minutes in. Ah, boy, that's multiple, multiple keeps that will be destroyed here. And this might just be game. I mean, in this situation, you can go for the core, even though it still has two armor shields remaining. It loses hit points way too quickly. That's just going to be game right there. They won't be able to do anything about that. The rest of the keeps is getting attacked too. Leo spawns and dies, so he's gone. And now this is the 1-0 lead. Nicely done. The Anti-Clone Association with the lead, everybody. They take the 1-0 against Hopium incoming on Aldrich Pass. GG. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Kalda TV. Battlefield of Eternity! The Anti-Clown Association is in the lead as we are heading into game number two. I like that we see a bit more Battlefield now. It was weird to me that in this round robin we haven't seen a lot of BOE. Now we see a bit more and honestly I'm a happy panda because I think it's a cool map. 
lots of fights, lots of aggression, so yeah, good on that. Now, B Bala gets banned. It's like a, a tear rolling down my cheek at this point. So, yeah. And then on top of that, we have Sylvanas banned out and also, of course, Diablo. So, Meme Blades now officially with a 0% win rate in uh, not only this tournament, but I believe in the last 10 years or so of Heroes of the Storm uh, when it comes to tournament plays. So, yeah, good on that. I, by the way, I have to stress this because they can't, they, uh, there was actually a question in the chat uh, because I called Meme Blades amazing. And I, I came in with a... But apparently the joke didn't really come through, so please don't pick meme blades in your own games. Please don't do it. Have mercy with your teammates. You will never win a game because you picked meme blades. You will win games despite having picked it. So, yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> not much more to say, honestly. <laughs> Hanzo, our first pick for the red team, blue team. The other blue. So. Gonna get those scatter arrows in and burn down the immortal. But I still wanna s give me something spicy. Give me something spicy. Come on. Lucio and Murden. I'm not feeling this spice right now. By the way, talking about spicy, I have no idea why this is a thing. Uh, wherever I lived in my life, I think, there always was when you go to the supermarket curry ketchup. It's one of the most popular ketchup brands, or not, not not brands, but like flavors or like types that you can get. Spain, for some reason, hates curry ketchup. It's insane. You only get normal ones and I guess barbecue, and that's it. What are they doing? Why am I seeing another variant? Okay, this is a taunt variant. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. My blood pressure. Like, what the hell is wrong with Spain? I don't understand. Curry ketchup is the best with fries. Like, it doesn't matter with what, it's amazing. Here, you don't get it. I was at least to four or five different supermarket chains already. They don't have curry ketchup. You sometimes get a bit of a spicy brava sauce, which is also nice. But even that is now out of stock in a lot of them. But the normal curry ketchup, that doesn't exist here. And Spanish people also suck when it comes to, when it comes to chips. So, the normal paprika chips, for example, paprika as a flavor doesn't exist here either. It is so disappointing, I don't even know what to say. Like, you, you, you want to watch, you know, some, some football or something, you want to have some chips, some paprika flavor, anything like that, they don't have it. They have only these, like, salt and vinegar... Uh, <laughs> Such a nice country, there's so many awesome stuff, but still. Just normal, they, they only have vanilla tomato ketchup. Who who uses normal tomato ketchup? Mind blowing, honestly, mind blowing. Don't know what to say there. Like, put some flavor in it. Like, give me give me something, something to work with. At least a little bit of variety. But yeah, not a thing. It's kind of disappointing. Still very happy here, but some stuff where I'm just like, time and time again, shocked, shocked. I tell you. Stukov after a taunt and Tracer. You know, they, 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 they baited them a little bit. They picked Varian in the first game, Trust to, uh, to bait them because they thought then uh, they think that in game number two it's going to be Meme Blades as well. Joke's on me, they're picking Meme Blades anyways. <laughs> no, they're not. So, Kelsia, final pick. We got Li Ming for a bit of poke. They need more against the Immortal. That's not going to be enough. Tracer, Hanzo. I mean, obviously the uh, blue team is not going to try and force some team fights. Get some hits in over here. And here comes Lunara. Yep, Bambi's in the house. Battlefield of Eternity, ladies and gentlemen. Map number two. Game number two. On the left, we got Giblets on Stukov. Just in case on Varian. Fuzz on Tracer in game number two. Grey color on Hanzo. And the mundane Zebra on Hogger. Hope you're incoming. Let's go. Over on the right side of the map, we got the Anti-Clown Association. We've got Filth. Playing Murden, Kelsey and Lonara, Roger on Liming, Viri Day on Lucio, and Valama on Urel. And as we're loading into the game, I'm actually learning that apparently most countries don't even have curry ketchup. I don't know what's wrong with all you heathens. You need to at least have some kind of spicy ketchup variation. It doesn't even have to be like spicy, spicy, you know, just a little bit picante is all that you need. But like this standard ketchup and then maybe you have barbecue is just like, come on guys. 
like there needs to be a bit more variation on this one. The Germans apparently have at least done something right there. Now, yeah, it is heavily disappointing. I'm disappointed in all of you people right now. Like, really in all of you. You need to learn the value of our lord and savior, savior that is curry ketchup. It just makes everything better. And also, when we're talking about chips, like, seriously, you gotta give me some paprika. Uh, paprika. You can't just simply go salt and vinegar on everything. That's just not a thing. So, yeah, very, very disappointing. I'm looking at all of you. Go into a corner and think about what you didn't do. Because, it, like, it, it, like, ah. <sighs> Guys, 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 guys. It's the same like having the discussion about proper bread. Having with an American, like any kind of conversation about proper bread. It's like, oh, we have bread. No, you don't have bread. You have like toasted sliced bread that is insanely unhealthy, tastes like garbage, and it's just trash. Go to, go to Europe, ideally Germany, there's other countries too. Go to a bakery, get yourself some proper bread. Every single American that I showed that was like, okay, I get it now. I get it now, fair enough. It is. Yeah. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked here. And I'm getting hungry. I'm making myself hungry right now. How did I end up on ketchup? <laughs> I have no idea anymore. Stormbolt to the face, and just in case, goes down. Runs out of hit points, and the red team is just jumping in and is absolutely murdering everything in their path. We like it. I think I get triggered a little bit because there was a really nice spicy brava sauce that they had at Macadona over here, which is one of the supermarket chains, one of the most popular ones in Spain. And it was amazing. It was my replacement for that. And now, for some reason, they don't sell it anymore. So now they are back to just the normal plain vanilla ketchup flavor. And it's just not, it's, it's not enough. It's like, it's disappointing, to say the least. Anyways, level 4 is in. We're now getting the Sledgehammer for Murden, so a little bit of extra damage against the Immortal. Game started off well for them, of course. Take the wall down, take one of the heroes down on the other team. Serrated Arrow after Redemption for our boy Hanzo. And we now have Taunt. So, yeah, Taunt is in the house. And, yeah. Like, I could go onto one of my supermarket rants again, and honestly, like, why not? So, I've already been saying that in a supermarket, right, efficiency is absolute key. Like, I'm the guy that just sits there, and if you are behind me, you are happy. Ural isn't happy. She's dead. So, very different state of mind for the two of us. But if you are behind me in a supermarket, you're very happy. Because I'm the guy that is ready. I am ready. The second that they are getting my items through, they end up in the back. They're immediately there. I immediately pay, and I'm out of there. I'm setting a new record. I'm on the leaderboard. It's awesome. The other day, I was again... Uh, oh, there was one, one woman with her two kids in front of me, and oh, they were all so incompetent. It was unbelievable. Forgot five things, runs back into the supermarket, looks for another bag. I'm like sitting there. I, I think I waited behind her for at least 10, 15 minutes. It was absolutely ridiculous. And after they finally had everything in the bag, she realizes she forgot her money at home. I honestly wanted to strangle her at that point. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be joking. I was just sitting there, and then obviously they all have to talk about it, and I was just like, for the love of God, I need to get out here. I was buying ice cream. It's hot in Spain. It started to melt. <sighs> What's not melting is that, well, the Immortal kind of melted, but the red team won it, so now they can move towards the top and see what they can actually do there. I mean, right now. Oh. Yeah, Hanzo jumping out. Varian, I'm not quite sure you want to be there. Like, that is a really bad spot. You don't want to go into that choke point. Stukov helping out a bit helps. Ooh, nice bomb against uh, Ural, but not able to yeah, get the kill there. It's a kill for a kill, but it's also immortal time at the top. And yeah, Lunara dropping acid and just taking everything away here. Now, we're getting Calamity on level 7. And give him the axe! Budget Gimli is going ham on this one. Kelsia, by the way, is running out of mana, but he needs to be careful on this one. But, yeah, down to the bottom of the map. All right. Irel against the Mundane Zebra. Still one of my favorite names when it comes to players. Oh, up the top. Taunt into a lurking arm. It's not really working so far for them because now they're losing Varian. Apparently, it's still a little bit salty that they picked. Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. get answered, baby. Murden is down, so it's a kill for a kill, but still, still a 3v2 at the top, so you don't want to fight that one. 
I'm gonna get away from this one. As quickly as you can. Fuzz! He's nearly getting destroyed here. Honestly, you look at the numbers, it's fairly even. But you have that push coming towards the fort, and I think this is gonna be the first one destroyed. Yeah, Todd against Lunara. Bambi's gonna be able to get away, just get some stutter steps in. And even if they don't destroy the fort right now, they already have it so low that it's just a formality at this point. They are gonna grab it. Yeah, they're gonna get that one 100% soon, Tim. Got Filth also still rushing around on his boar over here, moving down to the bottom of the map, trying to apply some additional pressure on the mundane zebra. But, uh, Stormball, Varian. Varian is getting hit a lot by this, and now that Ural is coming in, he's again immediately in trouble. Even with the taunt, they're not able to get completely past that. So he's still alive for now, but damn, they are struggling here. Valama, though, that man has, yeah. I mean, he went in. Doesn't have a level 10, doesn't have an ult yet, but he was just like, let's go, boys, let's take this. And, yeah. Gotta be a bit careful there, because until you have your rogue ability, you might still be shut down by the opponent. So, a little bit on the cautious side, maybe. But the next objective is up, so uh, after the first one was taken by the red team, they're now aiming for the second one. Yeah, if they can get a kill here, that would be a good first step, but they're losing Li Ming. So Li Ming is actually out, gets killed by a Tracer. They are about to hit level 10 though, so heroic abilities here would be nice. Ooh, nice. Stun into the wall, then a quick storm bolt as a follow-up, but the damage wasn't there. Imagine having Li Ming in that situation. And the red team has now also lost the halftime show. So it's a bit of an awkward one, because initially it looked like the red team might just be the ones to take another immortal, since they were so far ahead in experience that an earlier level 10 could have helped. But now the situation has essentially been reversed after Li Ming was taken apart. But, oh, look at that ult on Urel. She actually went into Sacred Ground here. Sacred Ground for Urel? Okay. So, really trying to full-on play zone control over here. And let's see how this is going to work out for Valama. Arrow from Hanzo is already out. Urel still jumping around. They're trying to get the kill against the Monday Zebra. And Hoga is... He's healing. And he got it. All right. He's still alive. And Sacred Ground value all day, every day for Urel here. Valama is still alive and kicking, but finally has to retreat and jump out. But they were honestly sieging up heavily on the opponent's immortal there and got the halftime show now to a 50-50. So each team with three kills. And then on top of that, 50... Oh, careful, Varian shielded! Another ult and Varian is gone. Varian eliminated, that's a five versus four. Couple of the heroes are a bit low here and might have to retreat. Hanzo is also doing an absolute number on the immortal. But uh, talking Hanzo, really got him there as well. So they're trying to make a quick play for him. Didn't quite make that happen yet. But next attack's coming through, and Tracer is eliminated. Tracer is eliminated, so is Hanzo. The reset for Li Ming, and Stukov falls. That should be objective number two for the red team, for the Anti Clown Association. And apparently, they're done clowning around here. So, yeah. Nice attack, good damage. That's going to allow them to take at least one fort. Maybe even two if they go for a two-pronged attack. And, uh, team? Hoga? Yeah, you're dead, my friend. Hoga is dead, and that kill could not have come at a worse moment in time. Just as they need him for defense, just as everybody else has respawned, Hoga is down. The only silver lining is that it is a 14-second death timer, so he is still going to be back soonish but not really where you want to be in that situation. So yeah, Hoga with a bit of a problem. Now we're going for the fort at the bottom of the map. Urel is pushing for the one at the top. So two will be destroyed and they're hoping for additional kills down here as you can already see and they might get them. Ha Hanzo is dead, even with the lurking arm from Stukov, they're able to get the kill. Now they're trying for Justin. They don't have Skullcracker here though, but well, they get the kills. Justin is dead, Varian died now for the fourth time. And that's 10 versus 3 kills, 2 forts destroyed, and they can easily open up the wall at the bottom of the map. Sacred Ground already being used by Urel here, so really sieging up on this and eating a lot of the tower shots uh, for the rest of the team. But just opening that wall up is already a big step into the right direction. Having the two forts both destroyed is obviously huge. Now you have catapult pressure, and you get the passive experience increase. That adds up as well. Level 13 talents, that doesn't hurt either. 
So, good news for the Underclown Association all around. They are doing pretty damn good here. And, yeah, just continuing to play it out like this might allow them to get a 2-0 victory here. Blue team still has some hopes, apparently, that they can turn it. Hirel goes up uh, against Tracer, and down here we have a 4 versus 4. Hoga is dead again, and they still want that camp. Then, get oh, the camp! Verde jumps out, and they steal it. They lose a hero, but they still take the camp. Now, can they still get a kill? They are hoping for Hanzo. Yeah, but he gets out. So it's a bit of a weird one, honestly, because at the end of the day... Oh, is that a kill? Oh, Tracer. That jump. Jump, get the cooldown, and make it. Oh! <laughs> oh and Urel is dead. Get outplayed. Get wrecked. That was a wild one. Check this one out. Thought he had the kill there. And nearly had it too. Ke went back in and then Variant comes and ruins the one we want. Absolutely disrespecting the one we want. It's a bit of a sad moment honestly for fair play, but still the kill against Cyril totally worth it here. Halftime show victory in this case for uh, the red team. So even after losing Cyril, they're able to uh, make that play. And Cyril is back. Cyril is back. They're already chasing Liming a little bit as she's trying to poke. Down here, Bambi defending. Uh huh. How much further can they go on this one? So, good filth gets attacked. Jumps out again. Stormbolt connects. Straight to the face of Hanzo. And Hanzo still wants it. They are apparently, I think they're going to get it. Unless they're now losing the damage dealers, they are going to get this one. It's going to maybe take a second, but the immortal is so. Oh, Varian is dead though. That's a 5 versus 4. Hanzo is still going to try and sneak close enough so that they can unleash another set of arrows and uh, lock it in for them. But maybe they can zone them away enough. They are trying. They're eating a few of the shots too. And now it's Bambi who's really doing the work together with Liming and talking. Liming, she comes back down to the fight. Already zoning them away here. Hoga, is that a chance? Oh, he's low and he's dead, isn't he? He dies and they're not even getting the immortal. All of that effort in vain. They were hoping to get the kill here, uh, at least against the Immortal, so they grab the objective, and it just doesn't work. So not only do they lose multiple heroes in an attempt to get the Immortal, but then uh, they're also... I mean, they lost everything. They lost the Immortal, they lost heroes. They might kill Urel, and they do. Urel goes down. 16 talents already. Just as the Immortal travels through the top. Not really a big shield, so this can be defended. Especially if you're playing a 5 versus 4, which is the case right now. So, yep. 5 versus 4 situation for them. Shots still being fired here. 13 to 5. And down at the bottom of the map, they went for Hawkeye again. Poor Hawkeye is absolutely getting murdered. It's pretty easy, though, for them to find him. They just have to smell a little bit, follow your nose, and you're gonna find the flea bag. So, Hoga would probably. Uh, a shave and a shower would probably be kinda nice here. Yeah? He died uh, three times. Feels like he died more often, if I'm honest. It's Varian who got the uh, who got backhanded a couple of times and slapped around here. Five deaths on him. So yeah, all the way up at the top, Valamar. It's an interesting style still with Urel. <laughs> I don't really mind seeing it, but it's still a bit weird. And Urel was punished three times. I'm not having the standard ult here, but has of course some decent zone control. And I guess to be fair, one of the kills was when she was trying to go for the solo kill against Tracer and Varian just ruined it. So I'm not quite sure if you should even count this one. They kind of cheated. At least a little bit. 13 to 5. One level lead still, but level 13, sorry, level 16 talents are now available for both teams. So it's an eye level fight for the next objective. Uh, they might be able to take Tracer down though. Tracer? Uh oh. Yeah, Tracer is in uh, real trouble. They want the kill. Nice arrow. Tracer is still alive. And. Oh, Ural is able to get away. That was clutch. Ooh, the stun. Stun from the shockwave, but they still have their forts, and so they can easily fall back and tap the fountain. But that was close. I mean, honestly, it was kind of interesting to see how this one played out because Tracer nearly died. 
wasn't... They weren't able to take her down, but then she rejoined the fight immediately. But they just swarmed her from every direction and tried to cut off every escape path that she had. Bit late to the objective because they went for the camp instead. But that applies additional pressure to the top lane. They're sacrificing a couple of hit points on this. Yeah, careful on Muradin. Got filth, has to be cautious. But a lot of the ults are still on cooldown after that fight that we had a second ago. So, yeah, they have one camp still at the top. At least one Khazra still remaining. And the next camp is moving in. So this top lane keep is in real danger of at least eating some damage once that, that lane travels through. There's not a lot of catapults there, but one is still traveling in. So this could be problematic, and the mundane zebra has to react to it, which allows Lunara to go for the immortal down here and drop some acid on it. So Kelsia is jumping in and doing the work to try and get them another immortal. And it's looking good on this one too. So they are likely going to take the halftime show at least. It's quite close, but the red team takes it. No tile advantage this time on the fight. So with that, we have the next attack coming in. Oh, big damage against the Immortal, and they're burning it down. Easy. Very hefty attack now. Lunara got attacked by a Tracer, but she wasn't able to get the kill. So now the arrow is out as they're trying to go for Urel again. Ult is in. Sacred Ground. Immortal is taken. Can they get some kills at least? That's what the blue team desperately needs if they want to defend this properly. They need to get some kills, but instead they're getting attacked. And damn! Hoga nearly got destroyed, but Lucio went to deep. Tracer down. Oh, and Varian as well. It's a double kill against the blue team. They want more. Kelsey has a bit low. Hoga talking about low. They're all low. And Liming gets Hanzo. Murden jumps in for some added action. Valama with one jump after another gets the sacred ground and the kill against Hoga as the rest of the team is trying to punish him now. Murden! 20 points! And gets destroyed by Stukov. With that, 16 kills to 8. The Immortal was traveling through the bot lane the entire time though and takes down the keep. So, is the core gonna fall here? No. If they could have killed a few more heroes, that would have been a different story. Then I guess we would have seen the core getting murdered. But as is, they are going to suffer at least some damage on the core, but it's not going to be enough to end the game. But of course, they haven't taken a single structure out themselves yet, and they just lost their first key. So the bot lane is wide open, half a level to 20, 78% on the core remaining for now. It's tough. It's a tough spot to be in for uh, the blue team. They're already down one game in the best of three series. So now being with a back to the wall is not making it any easier. They gotta win some fights, but once the level 20 talents hit for their opponent, this is gonna be made even more difficult. So, yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be very tough. And they're already starting to force the next fight right here. Trying to make a bit of a play, and can they? Yes, they can take down Ural. And they take down Liming. So, nice double kill currently for the team. Job well done. And maybe, just maybe, the chance to go for a comeback. It's 20 versus 20 right now. So they are starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. But they are also seeing a minion wave coming at them at the top lane for the keep that is still remaining. And uh, I don't know, you might want to deal with that. Because if you don't, then your keep is going to take damage and you can't really afford that to happen. So Hoga is making his way over. But even if he takes it quickly, this is still going to be some damage done. Catapult's griefing again. God, I hate catapults in this game. At least when there's like Kazura cams like here. I absolutely hate them. Even against behind Siege Giants. That would be a totally different story if that was there too. The keep is low though. Less than 50% HP. So no matter how you look at it, it has taken quite a bit of damage there. But this could have been uh, worse, obviously. Now, anyways, with the Immortal up and both teams on level 20, this is obviously going to be one of the big points here. So, yeah. Let's see what they can actually do. Right now, we're having 16 kills to 10. So the blue team is doing what they can to come back into it. 
The problem is they're really on a timer here. Having the camp at the bottom of the map, traveling through it, and Tracer pushing this further out really helps. Ah. <laughs> Just as they finally got a little bit of headway here. Hanzo gets insta-killed, and now Justin loses Varian. That's two heroes gone. Yeah, that's more than bad news. I mean, first of all, this one is happening right now, so they need to send somebody back. Oh, it's game. That's game. That, that's just game. It's over right here. There's no way bringing this back. This is just ridiculous. At the top, another keep gets destroyed. We have now 69,000 damage for Hanzo. And 76,000 for Liming, but obviously they can go straight for the core. They don't even have to bother with the boss any longer. Uh, with the, Sorry, with the Immortal. They can just simply end the game here. Lunara is just popping uh, off uh, with damage. Fuzz on uh, Tracer doing his best, but they have only two defenders. That's all that they got here. And this is a 2-0 victory. The Anti-Clown Association with another big win in the round robin here at HGC 2024 as they lock in a victory on Battlefield of Eternity against Opium Incoming. GG and well played. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.